Live from London, it's Plank of the Week with Mike Graham. Good evening and welcome to Plank of the Week. I'm Mike Graham and this is, of course, Talk. And uh, we're going to be here for the next hour, giving you the amazing array of plankery and absolute planks that have been going on uh, all this week. Uh, we've got Russell Quirk, we've got Kendi Holdsworth, we've got Rafe Haydel Manku, and we've got Amanda Devlin from The Sun. So welcome to all of you. Uh, we might as well get straight to it, might we? Russell, who's your first Should nomination? Uh, it's Sadiq Khan. Is it? An old favourite, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we do like Sadiq Khan, well, don't we? Well, he does kind of walk into these situations he quite does. frequently, he? does. He? Um, and it's on the subject of flags. Yes. Now, of course, flags... Flags have been um, yeah, quite the topic over the last few months. Lots, lots mm. of flags around London, whether it's pride flags, uh, festooning regions, and yeah. so on. Trans Palestinian flags, flags Palestinian. jihadist flags. Yeah. None of those have been banned. Mm. Yeah. Sadiq Khan has banned a certain flag. Guess has what he? it is? It's the St George's Cross, <laughs> our own flag. <laughs> of course. From taxis. Yes. So patriotic Don't tell taxi me. drivers. Is it because it's dangerous it's to drive distraction. around? Yes. It's a distraction. <laughs> yeah. So 500 flags down Regent Street, not a distraction at all. Loads of Palestinian and jihadi flags, not yeah. a distraction or any, uh, any issue whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, but if you happen to be a patriotic black cab driver, yes. uh, you're not allowed to display no. any flag, particularly the St George Cross. So you might ask yourself, why is this? Is it really a distraction? Or is it, by my contention, Sadiq Khan pandering to the yes. woke the left to yes. think that the yes. English flag is racist? Yes, of why course it is that. Why the taxi drivers? You seem to have a real issue with them. Yeah, I know. You just need to defend them. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah they should be well, defended. They're, they're, Political. They're the last true Londoners. <laughs> yeah. Londoners are your London cabbies. Yeah, yeah. But, but he didn't have to do anything, right? He could have left it alone and right. not had this debate. And he's almost done it as kind of some virtue signalling thing to send a message to the left that don't worry, I'm yeah. still there, I'm still I'm on still your here. side. Yeah, it might be an election purda time, but don't worry, I can still make some political decisions, <laughs> yes. even though nobody can comment about it. Well, it's yeah. because, of course, they see St George's Cross as being racist, you know, mm. all the way back to Ken Livingstone, there's yeah. been a war on, on Englishness, you know, mm. Ken Livingstone gave money for Diwali for a St Patrick's Day parade, refused to do one for a St George's Day parade. Yeah. And, you know, and when uh, we left the EU, you know, Sadiq Khan lowered the EU flag from City Hall, and I, I said to him, you need to put the English flag there. London is right. actually the capital of England. And, right. and he completely ignored that. There's no English flag <laughs> flying at City Hall. But you go to Edinburgh or Cardiff, there's a sea of oh, saltires yeah. and dragons. Yeah, they're proud. But that's called progressive yeah. nationalism. But when the English do it, right. it's racist. That's yeah. so true. It's amazing how crude and partisan it is as well. There's no subtlety there at all. It's so obvious what he's doing. It's yeah. Can you imagine it being the case in the United States? Can you no. imagine a mayor of a city, yeah. you know, even New York, even LA, saying, we're going to ban yeah. the stars? and stripes from your lawn because yeah. they're a bit distracting. Can you imagine it happening no. anywhere else? It, it would not happen it anywhere wouldn't. else. And also the fact that, you know, it's dangerous to have a flag coming out of the car. I mean, there are car drive drivers driving around with flags coming out of their cars. Well, they're not Saturdays. being prosecuted, yeah, yeah. are they? Most so Saturdays it's dangerous for cab drivers to do it, surely it should be dangerous for everyone to well, do it. Indeed, but he's not banning any other flag on any no. other car. No, isn't that fair? Go figure. And also, have you seen those... will be please, the Emily... Thornbury. 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 Oh, yes. yeah. She'll be really pleased yes. that get rid of those flags because remember she posted that picture of the... Yes, yes. It's all yeah, very, yeah, they're yeah. terribly snobbish about football. Very, well, very snobbish. Yeah, I don't like yeah. to talk about football because it's full, full of Even hooligans. Even though they always full of hooligans. rock up to England games and they have that picture <laughs> taken in the oh, park no. always, yes. yes. When they have their England shirt. Well, did you, know what, uh, well, did you yeah. see the thing about Keir Starmer? <laughs> Keir Starmer, for the first England match, was in a pub watching it, next standing next to Angela Rayner and a couple of other people. And everyone else was wearing some kind of English regalia, but he was wearing a plain white T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and you just go, you've obviously done that deliberately because you didn't want to be seen wearing the cross of St. George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe because mm. it could be held against you by your woke people mates. would say, no, yeah, yeah, you're wearing the, the, the racist That's because flag. he might change his mind at some point. So he's well, <laughs> <I'm just> saying, <laughs> halfway yeah. through, depending yeah. on his winning. And he'll yeah. Photoshop himself. You know, a different well, he was at Taylor Swift this week as well, wasn't he? He had to put a picture out. Oh, which yeah. was rather trumped, you have to say, by... Um, Prince William, he went the same night and managed <laughs> to get backstage and get a selfie with Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. And meanwhile, he was standing about a million miles away at the top of Wembley Stadium, <laughs> yeah. looking down at the. Uh, and looking down Taylor Swift's gone, Keir who? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Very so funny. Yeah, Sadiq Khan, the, uh, the, the, the never short of plankisms. Yes, I, I, I mean, I think we haven't had him on for a while. So, yeah, welcome back, Sadiq. Well done. <laughs> Um, Candice, who have you got for us? So I've got David Tennant, the oh, yes. actor, who's made all the wrong headlines this week for attacking the Equalities Minister, Kemi Badenoch. He stood up an, at an award ceremony mm. for which he'd won an award for being a celebrity ally right. to LGBT issues, yes. apparently. Was it an LGBT award, by yes. any chance? Yes, oh, yes, yes. And he surprising. went up... Yes, exactly. <laughs> and he went up there and made a very moronic contribution yes. to the debate by saying he wishes that Kemi Badenoch didn't exist and that she should just shut up yes and it, it's so it's so interesting because no other woman would be fair game like no. this to people absolutely on the left. not certainly no other black woman uh, let's have a look at the clip 
until we wake up and Kemi Badenoch doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> I don't wish ill of her, I just wish her to shut up. You know, Doctor Who, the hell do you think you are? Yeah. You know, um, but can you imagine if a right-wing commentator or well, a Well, if you said that about Diane Abbott? Well, yes. if you went on your show, seven right. o'clock one morning, yeah. and said exactly the same thing, mm. you know, of, of any black woman, you'd be called a racist yeah. and a misogynist. Absolutely. But because it comes from the left with good intentions, apparently, yes. uh, even though effectively it's calling for her to be exterminated well, and eradicated, it's OK. Do you know, I noticed, though, I don't know if you did, when he said, you know, um, if there was no more Kemi Badenoch, it didn't exist or something, he suddenly caught himself when they all cheered yes. and thought, oh, yeah. I better try and qualify that. <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I want her dead. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So then he suddenly went, oh, I don't wish any ill on her. Oh, really? Oh, really? Why'd you say it then? Yeah. Get Freudian. But when people talk about the toxicity in the debate, and this is like the big theme of Labour politicians now, mm. we need to take the toxicity out of it, mm. it's actually usually coming from one side. Yeah. And it's always towards the women who have actual real conviction, yeah. like Kemi Badenoch, like J.K. Rowling. I mean, the people who really stand up for yeah. things, and they're the ones who get attacked yeah. for the it. The enemies of apparently everybody apart from actual women. Yes. Right? Uh, who think actually they're, they're quite good. But here's what Kemi Badenoch had to say about that. I will not shut up, she tweeted this, I will not be silenced by men who prioritise applause from Stonewall over the safety of women and girls. A rich, lefty, white male celebrity so blinded by ideology he can't see the optics of attacking the only black woman in government by calling publicly for my existence to end. Brilliant oh, tweet. I mean, she absolutely yeah. smashed him around yeah. and, you know, he was left crawling around on the floor. No, it, what Kemi. absolute no, moron. But how does he not see that that's the entire problem about that debate is the fact that you know we've got men speaking up about yeah. an issue that it is about women it's about how women feel in safe spaces right. and for him to then go on stage and actually disregard everyone who feels a bit worried a bit yes. concerned about this right. huge issue right. it's it was sickening and i think um the reaction actually on twitter which is normally maybe a little bit left in you would imagine mm. they would all agree with him actually it was calling him out because yes. he just even richie said i could kiss someone we united on this one they both said you know this is a ridic ridiculous thing to say a disgraceful thing to say, you yeah. should never have said it. These actors, they just need an applause, and I think <laughs> for a round of applause to yeah. make their ego better, and right. you could see that that's what he was doing. But also, the thing, I think he's done himself no end of harm, really, because people yeah. used to look at David Tennant as probably a pretty good Doctor Who, actually, if you like that sort of thing. Mm. Um, and a reasonably sensible individual, but he seems to have kind of lost the plot on this whole issue. Because a lot of people make a fool out of themselves on this issue yeah. because they haven't looked very deeply into it and they tend to have a very simplistic understanding yeah. of it. It's good people versus bad people, yeah. when it's actually a very nuanced issue. And someone like Kemi Badnock, when you hear her talk about it, you realise just yeah. how seriously she takes mm. it. She's very well informed on it. Yeah, yeah. And there's no way that you could just dismiss her as hateful once you've no. actually listened to her. No, no. Not. exactly right. Let's move on. Rafe. You've got some milk for us. Yes, well, <laughs> there we go. That, there's an opening line, yeah. isn't there? Well, look... Not you know, the milk of human kindness, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow morning, when you're having your, your cornflakes or your morning cuppa, just I will think make you. sure that you don't, you don't pour too much white supremacy on them. Yes. <laughs> because this, this is where we are. This is a new study out by the Oxford Science Museum that's trying to link milk... To, to racism and colonialism. Right. You know, of course your, they are. Your pints of, of cow juice in the fridge is oppressing people all over the world, and it has to stop, and that's what this museum is out to do. Now, it's claiming, essentially, that, you know, large parts of the world have a high degree of lactose intolerance, mm. despite the fact that everybody is breastfed on their right. mother's milk, right. and that, uh, you know, milk was a tool by which uh, the West was able to conquer, to conquer the, the globe. It is quite remarkable. I mean, you know, it's so ludicrous, it doesn't even bear talking about, but right. uh, they, they had an exhibition about this also, the Welcome Collection, where they pointed out mm -hmm. that uh, in 1958, they launched, there was the launch of the famous uh, Have a Pint of Milk, a Drink a Pint of Milk yeah. a Day campaign, right. which Tony Hancock immortalised in The Blood Donor, and that was the same year as the Notting Hill riots. <laughs> 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 They're trying to infer that there's some connection between those two things. I mean, this is, we're paying for this, and yeah. this comes out yeah. of the... How much does it cost us to establish the milk's races? Yeah, they, they haven't released the funding, but it's the Arts and Research Council, yeah. you know, and what we have to do, you know, is to get serious in this world, is stop funding all of these woke bodies and right. woke institutions. Yes. Also, what are they doing at the Oxford Museum if this is the kind of nonsense they're coming up with? I mean, shouldn't they be there to actually sort of... Oh, look, there's a glass of milk. Ooh. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Indeed, Harrison well, They should there. be curating um, artefacts. Yeah. Careful with the old white supremacy overlay. <laughs> but, I mean, um, well, my jacket's probably yeah, racist too. It I probably guess, is, yeah. But this is the thing, you know. 
surely they should be preserving history as opposed to trying to destroy it. I mean, yes. it seems to be that they keep coming up with reasons why something's bad rather than why something else is well, isn't good. Isn't there also a view that museums themselves are racist, of course? Well, of course they are. Because of the artefacts. They have that to decolonise it. Well, yeah. I, think, I think this is not the first time this particular museum has been in hot water, if you'll pardon mm. the expression. Because, <laughs> um, because they're always coming up with these ludicrous, kind of, you know, professorial rants about absolute rubbish. That they just, it's almost like they've dreamed it up in the back of a fag packet in the pub. Yeah. Because yeah, cool. they probably don't drink or smoke. I mean, Oxford's the centre of this. The, the Pitts Rivers Museum returns yes. some of the Benin bronzes, you know? And right. uh, the Benin bronzes were commissioned by African slave owners and they represent African slave owners and yet they're revering these things. Edward Coulson's statue has starts to come down, but they, re yeah. they revere the most well, brutal slave River? trading nation in the. Pitts uh, River also did that thing, did they not, last week, where they had some masks um, which they'd taken from some African tribe which was apparently, in, I think, somewhere in Nigeria, um, and the mask could never be seen by women. It's ridiculous. Um, because they were used in some kind of ritual which women weren't allowed to see, right? So what do they do? They bring them to, to Britain, and then they say, well, we can't show you them because women aren't allowed to see them. Yeah. And you go, sorry? It's woke <laughs> misogyny. Yeah. That's what it is. But because it's a Nigerian tribe saying it, it's okay. that's it's fine. That's fine. That's yeah. bizarre, that, isn't that it? That type of misogyny is all right, is it? Yes. Uh, you lose track. I mean, I want to get one of these masks. I don't know what happens, you know, if you wear it in front of a woman. What, what, what you know, <laughs> do you have some kind of power over them? I don't know. Well, they fall at your feet, Mike, I guess. Well, they did anyway. I mean, I don't need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> if I needed a mask for that, I'd be wearing one, you know. If but you no. hear a bang, that's because I've just fallen. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it is, there seems to be one museum after another, in, in particularly in Oxford where they just come up with all this nonsense. Well, you remember, in the old, when I was young, you know, librarians, museum curators were the most timid, placid people in the world. <laughs> yes. Now they're sort of the Praetorian guard of the work movement. No, no, you know? now they're, they're yeah, activists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Emma Thompsons. <laughs> yeah. The David Tennant. Oh, Emma Thompson. World. Yeah, I can't forgot about her. Yeah. We'll have to give her Flying a over first class. I was class thinking to... about her with the David Tennant stuff, because, you know, yeah. she goes on about the climate change, and then she's on a picture on a yacht, or yes. she's flying across the well, road. Well, because she was here, and, she was here last weekend. She's a worthy plank. Actually. She is a worthy plank. We might have to make a last minute adjustment. I'd like you to take a sip of that and, like, then, like, wink at the camera or something. Very uh, like amusingly, she was pictured oh, on her yacht. Or a yacht, <laughs> wasn't she? It was a two, not just any yacht, it was a $200 million, million dollar yacht. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's okay. That's fine. Because I, I don't think they emit any carbon, do they? Yachts? <laughs> Well, they do when you put the engine on. Yeah, they do, when there isn't any wind. Um, anyway, we've got some white supremacy for you, um, Rafe. Have a look at this. With all the work left to do, I better get some more Borden's milk. There's just nothing like it for lots of get up and go. Yep, Borden sure is the milk with the muscles in it. It's the sweetest tasting milk, too. How come anything so good for you tastes so good? Because it's Borden's. Good, sweet Borden's milk. You bigots. <laughs> That's sweet. I see them wearing KKK. I'm going to say the new, the new KKK brand of milk there. Yeah. I bet she could reenact that for us, bro. <laughs> yeah. How could something so good for you taste so good? <laughs> so good for you be so racist. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. That was obviously an advert for milk from the 60s in yeah. uh, America. Before. Well, that, well, this is one of the, the other things in, that the museum is saying is that all the advertising around uh, milk over the decades has exclusively featured white people. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, until the 1990s, Britain was 90% right. white British, 95% white and people. And also, that's not true, because I've seen adverts for milk which haven't even made, been made by white people. This is ridiculous. They just go looking for this stuff now, don't so they? Do you think this yeah. is something else that's going to be banned on the tube, like Sadiq Khan? Sorry, going back to my old friend. Yeah. Uh, he's banned <laughs> fast food ads, he's banned sugar-related ads. Do yeah. you think now we're going to see milk ads banned? I wouldn't be surprised. It's a bit, bit too racist? I wouldn't be surprised, yeah, a bit racist. Yeah, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, Amanda, over to you. Uh, right, so I've got this activist that I'm putting up for this award today yes. because um, it's from the Youth Demand Group and he... We can't name him, his legal issues ongoing, but yeah. basically he climbed into Rishi Sunak's family home and the lake there. And then he goes into the lake right. and he, I'm very embarrassed about saying this on, on TV, but... Um, How are you going to put this? He, he drops his trousers. <laughs> he drops his trousers and he does a number two. Right. Oh my. In the lake. <laughs> they are children. What is wrong with these people? <laughs> Do you, do you, yeah, some kind of mental disorder there, do you think? These yeah. are the same people, the youth demand people, who stood, I, I sort of discovered them, because they've got the two-pronged attack. You know, they don't just want climate change to be the focus of their protest. They also want um, the free Palestine. Oh, yeah. So, so they've got the, yeah, du yeah, yeah. the dual kind of, you know, yeah. two big issues of the... Of the of double the, anarchy, of, I think they Double call it. anarchy, double of, anarchy. Of, the, of the anarchists, you know. Mm -hmm. We must have a free Palestine. Oh, and by the way, uh, can you sort out the climate as well? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, while you're it's at upsetting it. though because the fact that it's a youth demand group and you, you know, is that 
the youth now is this young people that's oh. how they argue their points yes. and yes. that makes yes. me frustrated because then it's like actually the rest of the population is going to look at them and say well you, you think don't know what you're talking about what you've got to do. <laughs> a lot of dirt well very possibly yeah. but they are i mean they're insanely <laughs> kind of obsessed <laughs> but they are insanely obsessed i mean the first time i came across them it was when they were doing something i can't remember what they did they painted something red or they'd thrown something over something anyway. Mm -hmm. But they were standing, there was this one guy who stood next to the woman who was speaking and she was ludicrous and ridiculous. And like, we're very angry and we won't stop until, you know, it was like a toddler saying, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not tantrum. leaving, having yes. a temper tantrum. And this other guy was just standing there staring into the camera, <laughs> looking like the guy from Spark. <laughs> the guy from Spark who never sang, yeah. never said anything. It was him, you know. Mm -hmm. and I just don't know what, they, don't know what they're bothering they're, for. They just don't want to have, so they've got, you know, it's all social media brains, so they just yes. need that clickbait yeah. and they yes. need yes. that it's moment not, it's not to go viral. It's about so-called cause, it's about them. That's Do why they he's even had care it about that? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And it, but if they did, you've got to form a coherent argument to then go out and actually yeah. get people to, to trust in you and to what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Otherwise, we all just laugh at him and call him a plank. Yeah, it's all filtered through the lens of TikTok and those sorts of politics. It's like very, 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 very crude mm. and very lowbrow. And it's all about, like you say, just mm. getting that viral moment. Mm. And so they, they, mm. they are totally incentivised by that now. But the yeah. thing is that gets me about this is that this chap's in his early 20s. His name has been widely reported all over the media. You know, for yeah. the next 40 years, any prospective employer who does some due diligence, <laughs> well, if he doesn't win, his um, name, will know that he's the, yeah. he's the man who took a dump. If he doesn't win Plank of the Week, can he win Plop of the Week? Plop of the Week, very Plop good. Plop of the Week, Plop of the week for what sure. What reputation, <laughs> that? that was his idea, not mine. <laughs> anyway, um, we're going to move on. Um, <laughs> We're going to move on, because coming up, we're going to be getting um, uh, some warnings about the heat, because it's been very hot this week. Um, and also, uh, something to do with the House of Commons and the drinking habits. But also, um, I'm going to be telling you about a doctor that I met this week. Um, it doesn't work very much, to be honest. Um, uh, that's all coming up in Plank of the Week. Here are the candidates for North West Essex. Kemi Badenoch, Conservative and Unionist Party. Izzy Waite, Labour Party. Grant St. Clair Armstrong, Reform UK. Smita Rajesh, Liberal Democrat. Edward Gildia, Green Party. Eric Bonino, Independent. Andrew David Green, Independent. Nico Omilana, Independent. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. We are well underway. We've already got some really, really, really good um, suggestions. I've got one now, which is a bit from left field, because it was on my show that it happened. And some of you might have heard of this guy because he's been on talk before. Dr. Dean Eggett is his name. Yeah. Um, and we started talking about, you know, some of the you know arguments people are having over, like, over health policy. You know, Labour are going to try and, you know, get 40,000 more appointments in hospitals. They're also going to try and change the rush for the GP surgery at 8 o'clock every morning. Um, yeah, because, you know... That's um, easy. Yeah, very yeah. simple. Yeah. yeah, no problem at all. Um, just pull it out of that box over there. Um, anyway, so I started talking to this guy about his GP's work, and I said, you know, the problem for me is that, you know, there's an awful lot of GPs in this country who don't really do an awful lot of GPing. And quite often people say to me they can't get an appointment um, because they're understaffed or the receptionist is off or something like that. And I said an awful lot of them as well, for one reason or another, only work about three days a week. And he said, yeah, I'm one of them. <laughs> and I was like, sorry. So what's he doing the other two? So the other two days he claims that he does something called NHS pathway work, which is sort of basically planning projects, planning kind of, you know, how people should be taken from one place to referral to, you know, it's okay. basically work that a doctor shouldn't be doing. Logistics. I said, well, you know, you've mm. spent seven years training to be a doctor. Don't you think you should just be a doctor? Yeah. Which you know? is a fair point. I felt like he couldn't really answer Given that no one no. a GP quite appointment fair. would be quite a good and idea I said, to be a doctor. Yeah, I said, imagine, you know, and I said, I used the analogy when I used to work in newspapers, um, you know, if you could get somebody who bought the newspaper once a week to buy it three times a week, circulation would more than triple it would sort of, you know, quadruple more than, you know, the number of days. Mm. So I said the same thing to him. I said, look, if you've got, you know, a million people who can't get an appointment and every single doctor who works three days a week suddenly works four, you'd get rid of all those in, you know, in a week, wouldn't you? Yeah. I mean, look, my, my uncle is 96 now. He qualified as a GP in the 1950s. Yeah. Who worked for 50 years as a doctor, five days a week, right. plus doing evening house calls. Right. So who does evening house calls There's today? There's really a chance he can come know? back in a couple of days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, days a week. I trust him more than some of these chaps, I tell you. <laughs> but this is the other thing. Then I spoke to another doctor this week, off, off the back of this, and I said, you know, what is the problem with these doctors who say they're going to burn out? I said, didn't they know what the job entailed? Did they not know it was going to be quite hard? Did they not know that they'd have to see one patient after another? Some woman rang in and said... Um, 
you know, my husband's a doctor. This is, and she sort of ran through his day. He has to do this, and then he has to sign that, and then he has to, you know, have a what, what telephone. Mean, like a job. Like a doctor. <laughs> like I said, sounds <laughs> like a doctor. Like a doctor. Yeah. Sounds like he's doing all the things that doctors are supposed to do, and that's what you do. Yeah. And if you do it for 10 hours or, or 12 hours, you know, three days a week, yeah. that's not enough. Yeah. Sorry. And I'm sorry if you're getting burned out by so doing a job. So they think it's the hardest job in the world, they do. therefore they can only do it 60% of the right. time. <laughs> yes. Yes. And when, when go figure, no other business you could do that. It's like me saying, I'm going to do five days a week, but I'm going to do three on the air and two off air planning the show. It reminds me of that rather, <laughs> no. reminds me of that rather pathetic uh, talk show host on another channel. Yes. Said that their job was the hardest. Oh, yes. Do you remember yeah, that? I do remember that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was also a plank. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's why A&E is so insane these days. Because yeah. you just can't get in to see a GP. Right. I mean, like, when one of my children is sick, I have to, like, call five different places to get an appointment yeah. somewhere. And often at the end, they'll say, oh, just go to A&E. And right. then you'll sit there for, like, Five yeah. hours. One of my kids has spent about a week trying to get a, a very minor thing sorted out with his doctor. He can't get a doctor's appointment. Uh, then they said, oh, it turns out you've been unregistered because you've gone to university somewhere else in the country, so now you're no longer registered with us. So you have to re-register. He still lives at home. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to re-register. Or well, can we re register now? No, you can't do that. The registration person is off today. Um, have to ring tomorrow. Oh, they were off again tomorrow. So you're still waiting. Yeah, they're ringing you can't get through anyway. Can't get through. I just, and then finally did get through, I think, on about day seven. Uh, oh, no, I haven't got any appointments. You know, okay. but, but it's where's, ridiculous. Where's the logic in everyone having to ring? So you've got, what, I don't know, 100 people all ringing at 8 a.m. Yeah. And two receptionists. Constantly getting a busy which signal. Which is a, a, a logistical nightmare, rather yeah. than just doing it on an app or on the yeah. website. Well, they want some people to do it online in some places, but, of course, a lot of older people don't know how to well, do that. Or I guess if you make an appointment online, you've got even more chance of not turning up, because a big mm. proportion of GP appointments, of course, part of the problem yeah. is that people just don't turn up. Yeah. Maybe just charge people. But they take that... They take the online option off the website because we have that at our GP and it gets so many people applying online right, that they crashes. actually they take the option away. <laughs> right. So you get to about 8.05 a.m. and they're like, sorry, not taking yeah, any more appointments today. The one today. organisation that doesn't seem to work in any way, shape or form is the NHS. Mm. I mean, you know, lots of places in the country have got problems, but the NHS seems particularly bad. Yeah. And GPs seem particularly worst of, of all of the things. Because, you know, a lot of people will say, I went to the NHS and had an emergency operation, they were brilliant. You know, this, yes, that does happen. Well, but it's at the lower levels of, like, GP surgeries. Yeah. It just don't work. But Darrow Ventures, because we put it on a pedestal. Well, we don't. Yeah. The, the country puts it on yeah. a pedestal. So well, they, they don't anymore so it. much, but they're beginning but they to now realise. they the most, don't they, right? Well, yeah. Uh, over 100 grand yeah. for most... For the most part, yeah, um, and of course, and yet, there's no accountability. Also, it's now turned into a sort of <laughs> service where they expect you to thank them for doing the job that we pay them to do. Yeah, it's kind of gone completely bonkers. You know, yes. sort of, we, you know, we're no longer the customers, uh, and we're not the people that are ever right. You know, we're the people who are now in the wrong for actually bothering to, to go to hospital. Mm. You know, we shouldn't come to hospital. I was, I was mentioned this, you know, during COVID. And then somebody sent me a picture of the GP surgery somewhere near rugby where the sign on the outside said, please do not enter if you're feeling unwell. <laughs> and you're going, it's a doctor. What do you want from me? I'm not oh, coming to say hello. How you know, is that? Bizarre. Anyway, uh, over to Russell. to catch something. Yeah. You might have to go to the doctor this week. It's very hot. Well, I can say my second nomination yeah. is the Met Office because um, summer has arrived. And if you notice over the last few days, so obviously we've had a pretty woeful spring and summer. Um, all of a sudden, summer's arrived, but what I would call a pretty ordinary summer. Mm. Uh, and it's been as high as, I think, 26 or 27 degrees centigrade. Yeah, I mean, it um, did get to 29 this It did week. get to 29. Yeah. So as a consequence, of course, yeah. what we now have from the Met Office, which is why they're planks, is the obligatory health warning, the yes. caution, mm. the emergency yes. that is, of course, it's all part of global boiling, which of course. we all know is going yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and, and the... <laughs> no, it's ridiculous, <laughs> isn't it? Um, and the message comes out from the Met Office, you know, be careful, wear a hat, take yeah. water with you, sun cream, and so you think, hang on a sec. It's not the Sahara, how, is it? How, how have, <laughs> well, two things. First of all, how have we survived as a species for 100,000 <laughs> years? But also, what do most of us do when mm. it comes to the summer holidays? Right. We jump on a plane, we fly south to find hotter if I, weather. If you, uh, preferably somewhere where it's about 38. Yes. Yeah. Right. But what you don't see on a travel brochure is, well, you might want to go to Mallorca or even Egypt right. or even the Caribbean. Yes. But be careful because it's going to be really hot. But of course it's hot. Yeah. We want it to be hot. It doesn't exactly. mean we're all going to die, does no. it? No. So Met Office... Well, no, it does apparently. Well, apparently it does. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So the Met Office, my, my, rec my recommendation is that they should be uh, Plank of the Week just because it's so woefully yes. pathetic and woke and nannying. It is. We don't yeah. need it. Do but we? of course, you know... Yeah. It's not just the Met Office, because we're going to show you now a, a little clip from Sky News talking about sunshine. Uh, 
There is a degree to which, as a society, we need to maybe reevaluate our relationship with heat. I'm thinking of our European cousins, for example, who have dealt with temperatures like this for a lot longer than we have, and they've had siestas in the afternoon or they've worked different hours to get away from the, the really persistent temperatures. As Brits, do we need to maybe change the way we approach summers now, do you think? No, we don't need to think about it at all. Well, she wants have the whole nation seen, to go to sleep at 2 o'clock. Also, have you ever seen such <laughs> earnest interviewing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We would change the way we live. Yeah. What? Because it's got warm for a couple of days. Well, we should to be, be careful. Honest, because... I would like that because I'd have like a bottle of wine at lunch, like they do in Italy or Spain or wherever, and then just go for a little siesta. Yeah. No, great. I don't believe yeah. this siesta thing is actually just a siesta because they shut down and they never reopen. <laughs> how many times? Yeah, but you, you know why it happens in Spain and Italy? Yeah. Because they all get drunk at lunch. Well, no, but also you drive <laughs> the doctors through. would love it. They'd but work you for a went down of that hours, way recently, it. didn't you, in your car? And yeah. I mean, you go drive through these little villages and places in France. Everything's boarded up, so permanently mm. boarded yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. You know what they're doing behind the boarding, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, behind the hoarding and stuff. But I mean, there's never anything going on. Yeah, but, but the, the, the worry is now, based on your nomination just now about not being racist, is that we've now triggered the, probably the public sector. They're probably going to spend billions of pounds now looking into whether we actually should close down yeah. in the summer <laughs> right. as, as a nation. Well, I mean, the work from home brigade don't need any more encouragement not to come to work. <laughs> you know, oh, I can't come into this. Why? It's too hot. But yeah. everyone's right. so afraid of the sun now that they're putting sun cream on in winter when yeah. you don't need it. So you've actually yeah. got like dermatologists just saying, no, no, you need vitamin D yes. from the sun. So you come from a hot country, right? Yes. What happens yes. there? Because well, it's hotter. Well, people just stay out of the midday sun. What, the, by, by way of common sense? Yes, that's and it. And to be told by the government. <laughs> exactly. <to do> <laughs> wow. I mean, isn't that incredible? Yeah. Also, of course, the other thing that, uh, that people are being told to do is to wear sunglasses even when it's not sunny. <laughs> because, you know, your eyes need the protection of the UV... Um, of course. ...whatever it is. Because of know. what, eye cancer? Because, yeah, you get eye cancer. But this is all about oh, money, isn't it? You go blind. It's the, the sunglasses... I mean, it's not the only thing that makes you go blind. <laughs> <laughs> the sunglasses industry, well, they, they'll benefit. Oh, of yeah, course. You know, exactly. the, the, um, well, we'll the cream, if it's doing sun creams, yeah. they benefit. Yeah. It's, that's all what it's about. Well, it's I bet money, I will money, find money. out that a lot of this nonsense is sponsored by the people that are making money out of it. Well, yeah. I, I was born in the summer of 76. Yes. And we still haven't beaten that summer, you know, despite all the talk about global warming and so forth. Mm. But this country is famous for exaggerating any bit of weather yes. that's not normal or mild. I lived in Canada for many years with minus 35 Proper degrees. snow, yeah. yeah. Minus 40 wind chill. And over here, you get in the newspapers, Arctic blast when it's minus three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now they've even changed the, you know, the, uh, the weather graphics. Anything in the mid twenties, everything is red, red on yeah. the map. You know, absolutely. It's just, project I know. And of course, the now, cold listen. kills a lot more people than the heat does. Of course now it you, does. I've probably seen this before. Some of you may have seen this before, but there is one particularly brilliant weather forecast that you should watch now. Do you know? I've always wanted to do the weather, so now it's my chance, and here it is. Apparently, it's sunny everywhere except in Glasgow, uh, where it's never sunny, uh, because even in the middle of May, it's always raining there. Manchester uh, looks quite good as well. Uh, that's a bit further uh, down, actually, isn't it? Yeah, down there. Uh, that's Manchester. Uh, over there a bit uh, is over towards where all the uh, migrants come in uh, across the Channel. And uh, the weather's a bit choppy, so there might not be as many of them coming uh, as you would like. But listen, um, the thing about doing the weather is that in Britain, you never know whether it's going to be right or not. You don't have to get it right because nobody else does. So frankly speaking, I'm telling you that over the next four days, uh, we're going to have changeable weather, right, which pretty much means it could be anything. It could be doing anything at all, um, from snow to sleet to rain uh, to very, very sunny. Uh, here in London, it's very sunny, very hot, hotter than Ibiza, in fact, in some cases. Uh, and away down there uh, in Cornwall, right, there's people surfing. Look out for Matt Hancock. Um, and uh, just be careful out there um, and always be prepared. Take a, a pair of uh, mittens, a woolly hat uh, and a bikini. Is that your audition? <laughs> so, uh, no, for some reason, I remember Chuck wanted me to do the, uh, the weather report just because we should do it, just for a laugh. And they were supposed to, we did it in that small studio before it was properly made up. And there was supposed to be, and it was a green screen, there was supposed to be something in front of me to show me where everything was. Where you were and pointing. Of course, it didn't work. And I bet you had so <laughs> I'm like pointing at things like a complete idiot. But I bet you had lived it, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, there was no, there was no, uh, no, script. no, no script, absolutely not. Well. Um, right, um, Candice, over to you. So <laughs> Oh, Sue Gray. Sue Who, Gray. Everyone keeps telling me oh. is the world's most powerful woman. Exactly. I right? love hearing her name. <laughs> I know. Who is this person? So suddenly Sue Gray is the most all-powerful person. Yeah. This hitherto unknown civil servant. Right. Who kind of... She came to prominence with the whole Partygate saga. She did. So she, had, she wrote that dossier all about everything that was going on. And suddenly everything she had to say was the most important thing in the world. Mm. Well, the male, interestingly enough, have spoken to some like sources close to her who have said that she's going to close... She would close down all the bars 
in Westminster. Right. She's denied it. Le well, Labour's denied it right. that she ever said that. What's it going to do with her? Well, that's the thing. The neo-Puritanism of it really yeah. bothers me. But it's also, like, who are these unknown people, these unelected yeah. bureaucrats, who get to pronounce on everything right. like this? And suddenly we have to take them all so seriously. And it mm. just, it seems like it's a common theme now. You know, you've just got all these quangos, committees. That's government by quangos, committees, and unelected bureaucrats. Yes. So she's not even a legislator, is she? She's no. chief of staff. No, she's, she's staff. Yeah. So what's it going to do with her? She was hired as chief of staff. She's not technically not even a civil servant, I don't think. No, no. She's, she's working for the party. Now, she now works for the party, right? Yeah. yeah. I bet but she's teetotal, isn't she? The great she's irony here is she, yeah. she used to be a pub landlady. In an earlier pub. life. Can you imagine? You know, the last call at one in the afternoon or something. Um, but like lemonade only. But she doesn't even understand, uh, you know, the history, the history and traditions of Parliament because the only people who can make that decision are the Speaker of the Commons, the Speaker of the Lords, and the Lord Great Chamberlain. Yes. Yes. It's not up yes. to the government to decide what happens within the palace precincts. Right. Yeah. Presumably, no. even if they did want to do it, there'd have to be a vote on it in some way, wouldn't there? Yeah. Can you imagine them voting for Noel Carl in the <laughs> Palace of Westminster? That's Western. never going to happen. Yeah. I bet uh, you they would. The journalists would all be in a terrible place. Yeah, you know, yeah. I would be devastated. They'd be like, yeah, you'd go down there <laughs> quite a lot. What would you do, Amanda? Would you I'd go and protest. Do they, like, still, do they, do they still have the rule that they keep the bar open as long as there's business going on in the, in the on the floor of the house? Um, no, they, it's, it can be late. There's a cut-off point of last orders, but then you can, right. the actual bar's open and you can stay in there. Right. But I think with the point about Sue Gray, it's, it's, it's mainly, not even stupid, it's stupid because it's just killing fun. It's just, yeah. you know, yeah. what are you doing? But the other point is, it could actually be quite dangerous because if you think about it, you've got people who, they're in this, you know, it's, okay, it's a bar, people are choosing to go in there, choosing to have a few drinks right. to relax. They've got very late night voting. But imagine if all of that drinking is then banned and yeah. it's then taken to well, places where it can't else, be monitored. So right. maybe it goes to MPs' offices. Yeah. And so you've got a place where actually people are consuming alcohol. Mm. There's nobody around either. to be held accountable. Mm. Yeah. And it's going to lead to more problems, yeah. if anything. And I think that's what um, is a massive worry. I mean, it will never happen. It's just a load of rubbish. Mm. I have that with everything crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's an argument for the, the drink within the palaces of Westminster not to be subsidised at the expense of the taxpayer. Yeah, some people say that. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand why. Although I guess MPs just put it on their expenses anyway, don't they? So it doesn't they really probably We do. pay for it one way or the other. And, and also, which seems yeah, wrong to me. Um, probably, yeah. But I mean, the subsidisation probably you would find it goes all the way through the civil service. You probably find those canteens in every single government department, yeah. um, you know, loaded down with drink and food and all sorts of other things. We never really see. Yeah. I've never been inside the Home Office. I know what it's like. Mm. Yeah. But I bet you they've got their own catering company. Mm. I bet you they've got subsidised everything. Mm. Well, and I suspect no matter what Sue Gray says, if you've got a load of raging alcoholics as MPs, um, they're going to continue to be raging alcoholics, aren't they, yeah. even if you shut the bars down? But absolutely. And yeah. can't you just say... I mean, they're all it going to the old yeah, the Carlton Club. Uh, aren't they? It yeah. links back though with every plank really. It's just about personal responsibility yeah. and it's why why does the government have to step in yeah. and nanny mm. every single issue? Yeah. Why can't it be that actually you can make a decision to go to that bar or not go to that yes. bar? Yes, yes. Well the issue is also if, if you close down those pubs and bars they have to still be near the precinct to come back right. for votes. So they're going to be at the, the Red Lion or, or yes. the Speaker, and they're going to be right. putting on... Yeah. We don't want to have a bunch of drunken MPs taking up our pub spots. They'll be stretching <laughs> in, uh, but not because they're actually ill. <laughs> they can't wake up from the alcoholic coma that they're in. Right, now, coming up, uh, we've got some more to go. Uh, we've got some election-related stuff, which is good. Uh, we've got Disney executive caught on video saying something uh, that he shouldn't have said. Um, and also, of course, um, I'm going to go and mention the football as well, because, I mean, the football has been plank fulfilled, hasn't it? Mm. Um, coming up on Plank of the Week, all of that. Yes. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. So, um, we've got a pretty good selection already, but we've still got about four to do. Three to do, actually. Rafe, over to you uh, with uh, some betting news. Yes, so, you know, this has been a pretty dismal and dreary election, but there have been some moments of black comedy. Yeah. You know, we had Rishi Sunak in the pouring rain trying to prove to us all that he really is a wet Tory. Yeah. We had... Uh, the, that wasn't he, even the low point. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> then he went to, to, he went to Belfast to the Titanic quarter yes, in order to make sure we all good. know that he's a sinking ship. Uh, and now along the same lines of political platforms, we have this Labour candidate, mm. Kevin Craig, yeah. who has betted against himself winning in his yes. constituency against his Tory rival. Mm. And, you know, at the point when the Tories are going down to their biggest defeat ever, yeah. it takes a huge degree of lack of self-confidence <laughs> and self-belief to actually be a Labour candidate <laughs> and vote, right. you know, and, and bet against I yourself. Know. I mean, you know... And this is after, of course, all of the uh, other betting stuff came out the week yeah. before. 
about the various people who were sort of close to Rishi Sunak, and who appear to have put a bet on uh, something that they knew, but nobody else did. And there's a big, and that's exactly the difference mm. here, because the reality is, of course, that was insider trading, essentially. Yes. These mm. were people who knew something that the yeah. rest of us didn't know. Right. And if, you know, in, in terms of, you know, whether or not you're going to win a constituency, I mean, that's pretty much common knowledge. We all have access to polling. Right. I mean, unless you're, you're secretly planning to drop your trousers on the news, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, if you know, a, if you know there's a scandal coming around the corner, then that could be perhaps the insider yeah. information. Yeah. But uh, to give up a £90,000 salary just to order a few... To win a few yeah, hundred in a bet yeah. is a. Uh, yeah. you know, I said election. <laughs> you know, this is the this is, this is sort of typical MP's reaction to something. But you know, this is the same trousers. Wasn't he also a donor to the Labour Party? He donated a lot yes, of money as well. He did. He? And actually, that, I found that quite interesting because, you know, I didn't know that was one of the routes that you could get into uh, to being selected. Yeah. But, you know. What, you're suggesting but, that you could buy a candidacy? Apparently, yeah. Wow. Well, obviously, that would be um, <laughs> pure speculation. But no, but the whole but the whole gambling story has also gone a bit Puritan, hasn't it? Because it started oh. off with this idea that, you know, MPs shouldn't be gambling on, on things that they have insider knowledge of. Fair enough. Um, I think everybody would say that's that's probably a criminal yeah. offence. It might well be. But just having a bet, yes. people started sort of saying, well, why are MPs even betting? They shouldn't be allowed to go betting. Well, they go horse racing, they go oh, to football. Yes. You know, you want to bet on who's going to win Wimbledon. You happen to be an MP. Yeah. I don't see why you should be able to do that. I, I mean, know. Yeah. Keir Starmer totally overreacted. Yeah. I think so. And suddenly he he kind of leaps on these bandwagons But I think he's well. got this... But that's his instinct, isn't it? Yes. As a sort of, uh, as a sort of prosecutor. He's yeah. immediately banned something. N Knee-jerk overreaction. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it, it's quite hilarious, though, that he would back himself to lose. I mean, at least the Conservatives were all backing, you know, a, a winning... Yes, prophecy. although there was one well, Conservative one, yeah. that came out today who was also backing uh, the opponents, which, you know, you might say is slightly less uh, plankish because he's probably right. Well, he... he... <laughs> 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 He'll actually win something. He, he, he bet £8,000 yeah. that he was going to lose. I mean, right. if I had £8,000, I'd bet on him losing as yes. well. That's pretty much <laughs> not an open... That's not, that's not a secret. But that's the other weird anyone. thing about a lot of these bets. It's not like... Unless they've been doing an awful lot of it over a course of, of time, and, and maybe they've made quite a lot of money, they're betting sort of 100 quid here and 100 quid there, mm. yes. which, you know, with apologies the apologies to anybody... going to be very good. Yes. No. Yeah. I mean, no. Even on £8,000, you're only going to make a few hundred pounds, you know, because the odds are so sort of clearly right. in, in, against you. So right. I'm not even sure why you would bother betting. So it's not yeah, like a sort of, so. you know, career-ending yeah. amount but, but, of money, but from is From a stupidity point of view, I mean, it's really bad yes. optics. It might not be yeah. wrong and it might yeah. not be illegal, that's right. questionable, mm. but it's just a really stupid thing to do from an optics point of view. It just looks bad. Yeah. But I'm convinced this has happened every single election. I'm sure under mm. Major, under Blair, this has always happened. You know, Guido Fawkes actually reported that the head of but public policy at the Gambling Commission yeah. has been working for the Labour Party, had been yeah. on many campaigns... Mm. So there was somewhere a leak on all of this, and it's just a, the fact that it's become public knowledge for the first time yes. now at the worst possible yeah. time for the Tories. I mean, again, I'm sure that betting goes on all the time, but it's a question of when you're betting and what you know. Mm. But, I mean, if you're stupid enough to bet the day before the election's announced that the annou <laughs> announcement is going to happen the next day, it's not just luck, is it? No. You know, we're not going to say, yeah, I just had this feeling somehow. Well, some yeah. might call it cheating. Some might call it cheating, mm, and, yeah. and as I say, it might end up being actually borderline illegal, but we shall see. Mm -hmm. Amanda, you've got um, a Disney executive for Disney. us. Disney, yeah. I mean, this is a kind of a story where you know it's going on, but actually there's now some like, video evidence. So he was filmed undercover. His name's Michael Giardia, Giard, and Giardi Giardano. Giardano. Yeah, that. Giordano. Um, <laughs> I was trying to do the Italian, like, make myself <laughs> say it right, and it doesn't always work. Um, so he's a senior vice president for um, Disney, and he was basically filmed undercover just admitting that they've got to with these roles that they're putting up just sort of go against hiring white men um so he it's a really interesting one about like the dynamics of that and how they're actually being biased mm. like, like, like conscious bias so, so he's it, saying towards... we are purposely not hiring white men exactly wow yeah i think we've got, got racism. Went... i think we've got a clip yeah. let's have a look and see what he says there have been times where, you know, there's no way we're hiring a white male person. It's kind of it's, yeah. unspoken. Uh, there are times when it's spoken. But How would they say it? No way we're hiring a white male person. <laughs> Say like straight to you yeah. or okay they'd be very careful how they message that to agents again Dude, i'll throw really. it back at you replace that word white with the word yeah. black there would be an absolute 
outrage. Oh, totally. It, it's racism. How's it not racism? Of course. He yeah. starts to go into it, but it's basically using like buzzwords, keywords, where everyone is aware. Because if it's been written down, yes. they are being careful. So this looks like some kind of undercover caught. sting or something. Yeah. So it's not to be caught. They'll, you know, they'll, but they'll write in a, to an agency or something that they're not looking for the usual suspects. Right. Yeah. So that would be the buzzword for a white male. Yeah. So it's true then, you know, there is institutional racism in our institutions. There is structural well, racism. Well, absolutely. But it's it's anti-white. You yeah. Know? And far from there being white privilege, there's actually now, you know, black and brown privilege. And of course, the senior vice president of Disney is in fact white. So I wonder if he should remove himself from that. <laughs> yeah. I also role. love yeah. there was um, somebody else. Point. He won't. Free no. Point. There was he a brilliant won't. write-up about it in the the Washington Times. And it said that it may no longer be a place at the Walt Disney Company for guys like Dopey, Sneezy, Doc, Peter Pan, Woody, or Buzz Lightyear. You know, oh, they're all white. Unbelievable. Male. I know. They're actually toys, you yeah. know? I mean, well, I don't know about you, Mike, but I feel particularly oppressed. I think, you know, white, middle-aged, straight yeah. men, you know, we are the most oppressed straight demographic in the world, aren't we? Are you going with that, are you? Yeah. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, don't apparently he also said, he's also been caught saying, this guy, that um, they didn't hire one particular black actor because he wasn't black enough. <laughs> there you go, sorry. What are you talking about? So it we've got it's like a sliding though. scale. The agency is kind of putting forward and like negotiating if they're using this kind of terminology um, to sort yeah. of suggest, you know, block this person mm. from the audition process yeah. or the you know interview process. Right, it must be really. I mean, there's no question that this is going on. I mean, every, you can see it. Nobody will admit it. You know, yeah. how do we end up with a gay black Doctor Who? You know, well, and, and, and a black only... Snow White. Yeah. This is a real, it's real woke prejudice and yeah. it's insidious. But it's not right. just woke, no, it's over-engineered. It's being done as a purposeful piece of engineering. It's not just, hey, we interviewed or auditioned five people and it happened to be that the black actress was the best Snow White. Brilliant, great, fill your boots. It's not that, is it? No. It's, we will only have a black actress yeah, of course and Snow White. Mm. But I don't think it then, it doesn't help anyone in the debate because if the people well, it's who... It's itself divisive, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because then people will suggest, so oh, actually, you know, were you the best? For the, they might even think themselves, was right. I the best person for but the you know, what people did I just say about this box? conversation, yes. people would say, but look, there's five white people talking about, you know, uh, how black people are getting too many uh, jobs in acting, which is not what we're saying at all, actually. Mm -hmm. But any kind of discrimination surely is wrong. Yep. Yeah. You know, there are some people, though, in the black community who will say, no, actually, positive discrimination for black people is, is necessary. Well, they'll say that people like you and I in particular are not qualified to talk no, about not, women yeah. or race. No, we can't we do can't, it. We're not allowed to do that. Because we're not, um, we're not women. Apparently. There's nothing wrong with we being... Could be if we yeah, it could be. There's I could just wrong identify tomorrow. as one yeah. for yeah. a couple of hours. You can be inclusive, <laughs> but it's when you use this sort of language where it's OK to attack white males. Yeah. And I think that's every acceptable. every situation, though, shouldn't you just replace, you know, what you're talking about with, you know, whether it's a different race or a different gender? But, but hang on. Isn't, say, to, do you have the same reaction about well, that of course subject? Isn't any you know? discrimination discrimination? Whether it's positive exactly discrimination right. or not. Any yeah. discrimination is Yeah, but discrimination. except there is this school of thought which says because there was so much discrimination in the other direction before, now you have to redress the balance. It's like the slavery For army, how long, you know? exactly? Uh, a couple hundred years? As long as you like, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it's been going on for so long. America, yeah. I but mean, I that's the argument about slavery, isn't it? That Because, you know, we were the oppressor for so long, now we should be oppressed. But the yeah. pendulum has swung so far, you know. I mean, if you wanted to watch a two-hour movie and look at the commercial, have a shot every time you see a white person in the commercial break, you'll still be sober yeah. at yeah. the end of that film. You right. know, we've gone to a point now where diversity is being represented far out of scale with yeah. the proportion that they are yes. in the wider population. Right. Yeah, do you think fact, it will then move backwards? Or like, do you just... I mean, that's... What, I don't know, I think with the Labour here, government, sort of I think at least 10 to 15 years of it not going back, you know. <laughs> and Hollywood, I mean, Hollywood is about as woke as you get, isn't it? I mean, look at all the people who now no longer really feel that they can even work in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. You know. But, but then you look at what's happening in Europe in terms of voter intention, you know. It's uh, it's the rise of the centre-right. And I said yeah. centre. It's yeah. not far-right. It's not hard-right. The rise of the centre-right yeah. is what's happening. That's the reaction. Yes. Maybe we'll see that here eventually. Yeah. But that's, that, that's a bottom-up revolution. The whole issue with the woke world, it's been a top-down, yeah. elitist revolution yeah. imposed upon us imposed upon by us Hollywood, by, by our By people elites, like Michael Giordano. Elites. Yes. But, you know. but, but for them to be saying all this is it's what they... They're saying behind when they don't think anyone's listening. Right. You know, that's what they don't believe what they're even doing. Right. They at least have well, a bit of wrong or, or, yeah, they so they, they, they have they no do. conviction on it. But they're still doing it and it's that kind of fakeness that mm. drives me mad. Just if you're gonna yeah. believe in something or do something, right. act on it, then well, you know, believe in it. Yes. Have yeah. a conviction. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. A bit like the leader of the Green Party who came out this this week and said uh, that she doesn't have a, she has a gas boiler. Yes. And she hasn't got around to uh, <laughs> yes. hasn't got around to replacing it with a heat pump. But she's got some quotes coming in. Yeah. So you know it's a bit awkward, isn't it? The election came as a bit of a surprise yeah. to her. <laughs> they opened so much this election. They will always praise the new secular religion in public. Yeah. But in private their behaviour will be so no. different. And with anyone pious you can always find 
find the hypocrisy. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Mm. There was a guy, I think, in the papers this week who had been demonstrated against at some event that he was at. And he said, funnily enough, I'd driven there in my electric car. And it was a climate protest. You know, I'd driven there in my electric car. Um, but these people were outside having been having arrived in a diesel powered bus, you know, demonstrating against me because I'm killing the planet. You know, <laughs> like Emma going, Thompson sorry? on a yacht on her first class travel yeah. all over yeah. again. Another mention for Emma Thompson, that's good, yeah. She's not an official plank, but she could be sort of a dendum. <laughs> right, coming up, uh, we're going to come to the end very soon. Uh, I'm going to talk about football uh, next on Plank of the Week. Here are the constituents for Central Suffolk and North Ipswich. Patrick Spencer, Conservative and Unionist Party. Kevin Cray, Labour Party. Tony Gould, Reform UK. Brett Alistair Mickleborough, Liberal Democrats. Charlie Cager, Independent. Dan Pratt, Green Party. Mike Hallett, Independent. Welcome back to Plank of the Week. Well, you would think that after the third week, is it, of the Euros, um, the football might have got a mention. But it sort of didn't. I mean, Gary Lineker got mentioned last week. But this week, I think I've got to make it to Gareth Southgate. Yeah. You know, because we're filming this currently just after the group stage has ended. Uh, England have made it into the uh, final 16. They're going to play Slovakia on Sunday afternoon, about five o'clock. Mm -hmm. But they have been absolutely dire yep. and absolutely woeful. Woeful. Mm -hmm. And even Gary Lineker, to be fair, called them shit. <laughs> um, in his own podcast, right? And then got into a lot of trouble with Harry Kane, who Harry Kane said, no, 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 talk to me like that. No, no. You know, and Harry Kane apparently said that he should support the team. And you go, well, I can't support the team. It's called one goal. Yeah, not at any cost. It's three games, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Support them on merit, yeah. but not blindly. No. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, the, the, they specialise in kicking the ball backwards. Well, they've had one good half in yes. three matches, right. really, which was the first half that, that they much? played against Serbia. Yeah, yeah. First 20 good. minutes. And then the wheels fell off. I don't no, know what first happened. first 20 minutes, when they, then until they they scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. as soon as they scored, that was the end. Yeah, yeah. Harry Kane has also come out and said at various points that he, he, they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So he actually critique... said that nobody knows which position they're pressing. Nobody knows which, you know which, which way it went to go forward. Who's playing so where? So what's the criticism? The criticism is Southgate playing it safe. Which I mean, okay, he could argue. Well, I've got us through. I've got us through to the next. Well, that's so, well, the, the sort of and the lucky rabid... for him, it's Slovakia and not Germany, France, yeah. Spain, or Italy. And they have become. They've yeah. been very lucky because apparently they won't play any of those teams. I was just listening to someone on TalkSport. Mm. They won't play any of those. teams until the final, probably. Yeah. The most likely uh, sort of game against the Netherlands would be in the semi-final. Yeah. You know, they won't get Germany or France or Italy. Yeah. Well, they might get Italy, I think, you know, but, but after Slovakia. So, 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 but South I'm not convinced they'll beat Slovakia. No, no, maybe not. Look, so Southgate is definitely a big, big part of the problem. Of course he is. Um, but you and I were talking about this at the end of your show the other yeah. day. I actually also think, obviously, it's the players. Um, and I think the players are a bunch of prima donnas. They would rather mm. be sitting there looking at their new watches yeah. and thinking about the Lamborghini they've just ordered yeah. and rather be on holiday in the Caribbean or on Emma Thompson's yacht. Frankly, yes. I've done it again. I thought you were going to um, say on Emma Thompson for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're um, on that. No, I think they'd rather be there. I don't think they're very patriotic. Well, Phil Foden, right, um, who home, is one of the greatest players that Manchester City have got, who has sort of turned into a massive dud playing yeah. for England, he's come home for the birth of his third child. That's and outrageous. I said, you know, football, football's coming out. You might as well bring the rest of them back as well while you're at it. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, no, no, I, I think it's been, uh, it's been very disappointing, but I am, for one, not surprised. I just don't think we're very good. People think we are and we get this, it's coming but home. They've got some the... good players, though. Jude Bellingham won the Champions League and he's a brilliant player, but after three games playing for Southgate... He but maybe like not. Well. Yeah, again, as you say, not together. That's the trouble. They don't know how to play as a team. No, but they, I think none of them know what they're doing because he's not telling them what to do. Yeah. And well, most good football teams have got a great coach. Yeah, right? but he's also not whether very. Whether it's Jose Mourinho, whether it's Pep Guardiola, you know, these kind but of. He's people. not very feared, is he? And I do think that if you go back today to Alex Ferguson him, right? and yeah. people like that, I think you've got to be feared as a coach because yeah. otherwise these well, guys come off the pitch and they well. think. So what? We didn't he's do more, very well. He's more interested in making sure that they've got their own scent in the rooms that they're staying in. And, you know, they've got, you know, all sorts of, you know, coaches that are helping them with their mental health. Oh, and making sure they're all wearing cardigans because that's, that's the, you know, the yeah. trend. This, it's just ridiculous. So he's nannying them and mollycoddling them. Yeah. And, surprise, surprise, look where it ends up. And, you know, when they miss penalties, it's because they're getting racist abuse on Twitter. Well, it's not, actually. It's because they miss the penalties. It's because they're rubbish. Mm. Yeah. Did you see in the African nations, the Ivory Coast were absolutely ruthless. They fired their coach halfway through the Tournament. Did they? And then actually won. Right. There you go. Well, somebody, said, somebody said to me in a tweet this week that, you know, uh, when they were watching the last game against, um, who was it? Um, oh, Slovenia. Slovenia. That, you know, halfway through the, the game, they should have been a Tannoy message to say, you know, taxi for Mr. Southgate. <laughs> yeah. You know, and just whip, whip well, it And you could have grabbed anyone out of the crowd to yeah. do the job instead. Well, they were, chucking, they were chucking beer at him. They were Ooh. booing. 
I mean, and also part of it for me is that, you know, if you go to watch football and particularly the, the Euros and the World Cup, lots yeah. of people watch it in the pub. Loads of people go out from, from offices and things. And they're not big football fans, but they yeah. just get, in, get behind England. And it's so dull. Yeah. You can't, you know, it's meant to be entertaining. It's but you just, imagine yeah. the money that some of these fans have spent as well. Do well, you know, you know also, Southgate, Southgate is the highest paid manager at the Euros. What's he on? Five? Five million Five a year. Five million a year. The atmosphere has been as flat as Gareth Southgate's personality, yeah. in my opinion. Um, yeah. um, but I think, from my kind of football knowledge that I've got loads of, I think that the reason it's so flat this year is actually because we're missing Jack Grealish. We're missing looking yes. at him running in his shorts. Even women love him, don't they? <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, even, even Julie Hartley Brewer knows who Jack Grealish is. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Honestly, when he got it, was said that he wasn't going. But that's typical of Southgate. That's typical of Southgate, isn't it? To not pick Jack Grealish because he doesn't really like him much because he's a bit of a rebel and you know has likes to drink. But you know, or he's Radford. a character. Oh, that's interesting. It was a yeah. god a year ago. Right. Yeah. I love that he was like on. They were saying Jack Grealish is on loan to Wayne Lineker's uh, <laughs> bar in Ibiza. <laughs> there yeah, for the summer is that's the exactly Euros. what he's going to be doing. Yeah. I think there's only one, one one winner this week, and I think it has to be David Tennant. You know, yeah. yes. I think I David think Tennant has right. made well, not only a plank yeah. of himself, but he's yeah. made a plank of, of the entire sort of Doctor Who franchise. He is a massive muppet. He is <laughs> muppet of the, league, of the show. Uh, In a word. So yeah, so there we go. I'm going to lift this up, put it down again. Very good. We actually worked there. So thank you very much indeed. Well done, Candice. Uh, well done, Candice. Uh, well done, Russell. Well done, Rafe. Well done, Amanda. Thank you very much indeed. They're all very good. Um, we'll see you the same time next week. Plank of the week.